somewhere out on the prairie is the greatest cowboy that's ever been when he lays his hands upon the ponies they shudder Back to the horse horsemanship. Last time you saw me, I was filming in sunny, sunny California, and now I have relocated back to Middle Tennessee. We have a yearling foal here, a little filly that they've been having trouble getting halter on. Uh, Patty, one of the owners of it, took an hour the other day and did get a halter on her. Uh, I'm gonna let this filly tell me how I'm gonna approach her. You know, I might just get in here and not let her evade, evade me, just stick with her. Or I might pull my clicker out. And a clicker, the way I use it, is pressure and release. That's all it is. The release comes when she turns and faces me when she hears that click. At no time am I wallop on the horse. All that whip is to encourage her to move her feet. I'd rather do that than throw them in the round pen and run them round for an hour and take chance of hurting herself, damaging her joints. So with that said, I'd like to pull Ray in here. Ray, we started out, he was a customer of mine for years here in Tennessee. Uh, as far as natural ability, let's say he was a little bit, maybe, kind of. Very little. <laughs> We were both younger then. And uh, we got tons of stories we can tell. But now he's went from a little bit to training. He's raising an Andalusian, and I'm really impressed with his Andalusians. When I flew out here a couple months ago, I played with a couple of them. They're nothing like the California Andalusians. They're quiet. They're not as big and stocky, but I like their minds. To me, that's the most important thing. And... Uh, I'm just going to weed her out and feed her. I'm not going to put no pressure on her. I'm just going to sit here and pet on her a little bit. Now, if you notice, now the reason I'm holding on her mane so I don't lose my foot. So I'm just going to sit up here by her shoulder. There you go. Anyway, I'm not going to let her think she can bait me. Now right there, she's standing good. So when I approach a horse like this, I start at one point, 
then I'll work myself, see what works. And if one thing don't work, I go to another. And the biggest thing where people go wrong, they want to put this halter on this filly. Right now, I just want to pet on her. That's all I'm going to do. Just let her feel my hands, feel the halter. Because I saw real quick, you can pet on her, but she knows how to evade. So instead of me letting her evade. Now right there, I've just got the rope around her neck. That's all I want. In other words, I'm going to try to get her to face me all the time. Because with this rope around the neck, the biggest thing, like I said, she's used to invading, invading, invading. So right now, I keep her facing me as much as possible. There we go. Now, what I was waiting for, right there. Now, there she turned her face away from me. Now, when she looked at me, I removed my hand right then and there. Even though it was a reaction, it wasn't, she was trying to find that hand, it was a reaction, but I got to build on something. So I'm going to put my hand on the center there. So yeah, I could probably slip this halter on her pretty quick. But uh, my main concern right now is her facing me, standing here quietly. I don't want her to turn that head just like she's doing right now. There, now she's starting to look for that hand a little bit while I'm scratching it between the eyes. So I'm just going to put a little pressure on her nose, turn to my right, and I'm going to scratch her left side of her jaw there as I'm pulling her over. Now right there, she backed away from me. You saw me, I pulled her right. My feet didn't go to her. I made her come to me. I'm just going to pet. I'm going to get to the side of her. And that's why this one's a little short, but this is why I like my... Right there, I stopped my hand. I didn't go any farther because if I do, I'm going to have a fight. But I'm pulling with my right hand to pull that neck around. Now what I'm going to do is get up here. and start touching with the rope. See, I'm not playing her game. Because she figured out she don't have to get that halter on. So I'm going to get up here and just pat. You know, as soon as she felt that thing on her nose, she walked off. So now, I'm going to bend her. But I'm not using the rope. I'm going to use my hand. I'm going to flex around there. I'm going to scratch. I'm going to let go of the rope and just scratch some more. But I'm still bending her. Now I'm going to 
I can reach around I can scratch and I let go of the rope. See now with she's at the age and small enough that I can just do that and I'm keeping her on the bend as I'm doing that. Because I want her, you take like Suka, my Mustang, Cindy can tell you that horse puts his, once you get a rope hauled around his neck, he puts his head right in that nose band. So now I'm going to give it a little twist in my rope so I got control of her, of her nose. My halter is still here. And that's one nice thing about these rope halters, they're real pliable. Now right now, she's going to move. Now see how I'm doing my hand ray? Mm -hmm. I'm slipping underneath, I'll come around, bend her, and slip. There, that was good. Yeah, the exhale was a good sign. So, you know, this is where a lot of people go wrong. They get a halter on and they think the job's done. But with her liking to evade you, no, the job is far from done. This way you, you know, yeah, we want her at some point learn to give to the hip and this and that. And, you know, come to that halter, which that's pretty good for a yearling. But I'm going to use this halter now so I keep her facing me so she don't. So I'm going to keep the halter on her, bring my hand back up, and then just start bending her. that jaw. There we go. Good girl. Get over here. You know, I got emails lately about yearlings. And this is where you start. You know, I'm going to get a halter on. Uh, let's say she wasn't halter broke and she's this calm. I'm going to start bending her. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to flex her. And while I'm doing it, like I said, I'm scratching that jaw. There, good. And you know, a horse like this. I'm always to the next step level. So what I'm seeing is uh, even though she's only a year old, I'm trying to figure out what size she's stiffer on. Cindy or Ray over, but I don't want to pull her back. You know, that's one thing. Right now, she's trying to back away from that pressure. And so, I just hope she don't back into nobody, because I don't want to take that pressure off of her until she stands quietly, like she's doing right now. And now we'll walk forward. 
because if I let her back away from me and then stop, come back to the center and start over again, she just won that, that round. Now my arm, by placing over her nose, it's just like the nose band. Good girl. There we go. And how do I know when to walk off? When I'm not feeling no resistance to my hand. And I'm not, I'm using as little force pressure as need be. Like right now, I just barely got my forearm against the nose. I mean, I'm just barely touching and just pulling a little bit. Good girl. We're going to go back, slip the halter off again, and we'll take it all the way off and we'll reapproach her. You know, for y'all who asked me about earlings, and she's doing it real good, you know, first thing I'm concerned about is them moving that hip. Just like any other horse, a full grown horse, want to move that hip. Now even if they're not halter broke, this is where I start halter breaking, is move that hip. I don't pull forward. I walk at that hip, pull them to the side, and let them follow, follow that halter. I'll walk to the hip, get that hip moving, pull to the side. I want, I get my lateral first, and then I worry about them coming forward. So what I, now when I get ready, and she already knows how to come forward, what I'll do is just move her feet, and then pull. It's one hard pull. So, and as soon as she gives to it, I take all that pressure off. You know, yearlings, they don't need a whole lot. You know, basically they got to learn to be able to pick up their feet and everything and just lead. I think Ray's been doing some of his homework. not going to hurt her. Actually, especially somebody that's got a lot of woven wire or something, this can save her from getting hurt. I'm just going to use my rope to hold that foot up. And right there, she's real relaxed. So now what I'm going to do, Cindy zoomed into my hand, I'm going to wiggle above her passion. And right there, that's what I want. That's nice and relaxed. That's a relaxed horse. So now I put it down, I just back away from her. So my objective is get her to relax. But when I see like she's trying to fight me, I'm not gonna fight her. I just put it, you know, I didn't loop it. I just put it up there <laughs> and just held it. This is real TV, people. Now, this is actually, that shows how relaxed she really is. Boy, when you gotta go, you gotta go, don't you?
So I'm going to go for a back hoof. I got me enough line here. But I don't feel, I'm not going to make her feel trapped. If I try to hold this tight, she's going to feel trapped. She's the only baby. She's going to move. But also, I know she's all going to move anyway, but I don't want her to move because she's scared. Feels trapped. You know, she moves off balance or whatever. That's a different story. Good girl. Now, the first time I ran my hand down, she put her foot where she, you know, she overreacted. Right there, she's moving away. I'm going to keep my hand here. And as soon as she stops, I get her out of there. Come back. Now if you watch me, my body's to the side. So this way, if she would, of course she don't seem to be kicky, but she did get me, she, it's going to get the meat. There. Now right there, I picked it up, held it for a second, put it right back down. Flip the halter off and we're going to put it on her again. Now, I'm not just going to drop the halter. I'm going to get up here beside her. Use my that right side of the halter. I'm going to use that. I'm going to pull her in. I'm going to do it again before I completely drop it off. I'm going to pull it, pull her over. And pull her nose around here. In other words, I'm not going to try to get this halter on until her nose is, she's bent towards me. I'm not going to try to, well, have fought with her and, you know, because all you're doing then, like right there, see, so I'm going to use my halter. And you see how I just barely touched it that time she bent to me? So now I'm going to take it off. I'm going to retreat. There we go. Once again, I'm going to reiterate. I'm going to take my right side, pull her around, and slip it up. Well, oh, Mr. Ray. Yes. Yeah, this is going to be an uneventful. Now pull, now right there, see how, mm -hmm. let me show, just stand right here, watch again. Because it's hard to catch. See, I'm going to use this. See, now she's bent, now I slide it. Okay. okay. See, she did real good, you slid and then you bent it. Right. Which is nice, but I want her, like right there, see she's trying to come away, I'm going to use this right side of my halter controller because okay. once she gets down here I want her to feel that nose band when she's bending. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Yeah, so she knows to bend toward me. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. There you go. 
now right there and and with her not wanting with her trying to bait the halter try to keep her on the bend until you get her until we get, yeah now that uh, would be a little bit annual with her because she has already learned how to evade the halter and how to put it on. I mean, right off the bat, you saw her wanting to turn that nose away from me. Mm -hmm. that was, oh, that was good. I just... Now, Ray, that wasn't bad, but when she tried to evade you, mm -hmm. Get your halter in front. Mm -hmm. See how I'm using that? Uh, see how pretty that was? Yeah, that's perfect. See, I, that way, I got this whole, I'm using this whole right side of my halter to bend her. Okay. See, and that, that, that's what we want. Now, see, this not picking up, but what I'm doing with my left hand, I'm keeping her on the bend. Mm -hmm. See, now I'll release. Now, you see where she's at? Mm -hmm. She's still on the bend. Still bend. Now, this is what I call the foundation. We're teaching this horse how to flex. Now use the whole, no, not me, you gotta go to Ray. Use the whole thing, now just bend her, use the whole thing, bend her around. There. Okay. We'll keep working. Yep. Well, you see, just that approach, it, it mm -hmm. doesn't take, no. Oh, Tell Patty, said, so that's pretty well cut and dry. I mean, so I'm happy to be back here in Tennessee. Feels like I came back home. Got good people here and everything. I already got people wondering when I'll have clinics and such. And that's coming down. Uh, in a future episode, I do have a farewell to California episode coming up and a little bit tidbits of our trip, which this is what we had on our trucks. Five horses, one miniature burrow, 14 ducks, three, turkey, three turkeys, how many chickens? Four chickens. Oh yeah, we had a couple hat hatched out on the way. Oh, plus two dogs, a cat, and a parrot. So we was a floating nose art. This is probably a short episode, so I mean, it is what it is. It went smooth, and I'm not going to complain. I didn't get now. There was sometimes I would do want to bring this up. I've been at this game a long time and Ray's seen me handle a lot of horses. I can read 99 percent of the time I can read a horse. I could tell this filly was not kicky. Now when I got so close to her I when she was moving off of the bat, use judgment. If you got a kicky horse, figure out a different way. But this mare wasn't, so I didn't have to worry about that. Of course they could always kick out, but like I said, I can read him. I've been known to climb in a stock trailer with Mustangs never been touched because I can read him. It's not so much um, that much special to anybody else. I've just handled them kind of horses. That's unfortunately is my expertise. So I'm going to give y'all a break. No preaching today. So as I always say, be true to horse, they'll be true to you. To my kids and my grandkids, special person out there, Washtay Lake Katie, God bless and take care.